Masking up to slow the spread while health officials are now encouraging more Americans to use N95 grade masks and sh shutting classroom doors due to staffing shortages linked to the Omicron variant, what the Texas Education Agency is recommending for schools across the state. And it's 10 p.m. on a Friday night, and it's still extremely windy across the panhandles. How long will this relentless wind last? I'll let you know in a moment. KAMR Local 4 News at 10 starts right after this. Live from your local news leader, home of the number one 10 p.m. newscast on the High Plains, KAMR Local 4 News at 10 starts now. One of Thomas Michael Dixon's convictions now reversed by the Seventh District Court of Appeals. Thanks for joining us tonight. I'm Judd Baker in for Andy and Jackie. That story is topping our news tonight at 10. The appeals court acquitted Dixon on the charge of murder in the course of committing burglary, but upheld his murder for remuneration conviction. Dixon is convicted in the murder for hire plot that killed Lubbock doctor Joseph Sonier. He, the appeals court is reinstating his life sentence without parole. Fireworks set off in an Amarillo area school. According to APD liaison officers, they heard a loud pops at Caprock High School. They say that the school was then placed on lockdown while officers looked for the source of that sound. Police say a student had set off fireworks on campus. That student taken into custody and the lockdown then lifted. Crews responding to a wildfire in Hutchinson County. The fire being deemed the Carbon Camp Fire. It's happening near Stinnett and Highway 136. According to the Texas A&M Forest Service, this fire is an estimated 177 acres and is 80% contained. The say evacuations remain in place, but the Y north of Stinnett to Hansford County is now open. According to a preliminary report from the National Weather Service, three homes were lost in that fire. The active case number for Potter and Randall County is inching closer to 7,000 to look at today's report card in just a minute. But first, we're going to check outside with Chief Meteorologist John Harris. John, it's a windy one tonight. It is a windy night. You know, typically here in the Panhandle, it's windy during the day, but the winds subside at night. But not tonight, Judd, and the wind will continue to howl throughout the day tomorrow. One of the reasons for it, we have a large area of low pressure loft that is continuing to send the winds to the surface, and that will be the case for the rest of tonight. Right now, as of 10 p.m., winds still straight out of the north, sustained around 35 miles per hour. And you see that green? That's rainy loft that's evaporating on the way to the ground, so it actually accelerates the wind, and we don't get any benefit from it. 39 degrees in downtown right now, out at the airport. We have 38 day planner forecast for the city, 11 p.m., still windy. 37 in the morning at 8 a.m. Still windy, 24 wind chills in the single digits, and at 11 a.m. It's still windy and temperatures around 32, but lighter winds are headed our way. We'll talk about that in a few minutes. Judd. All right, John, looking forward to that full forecast. Thank you. You're welcome. Potter and Randall counties have seen an increase of nearly 2,000 active COVID cases in just the past week. Facts not fear tonight at 10. Amarillo Public Health is reporting 596 new cases in Potter and Randall counties. There are 139 new recoveries. Unfortunately, one death reported in Potter County today. We're sitting at just more than 6,900 active cases at this time. The Animal Public Health Department releasing its weekly COVID-19 hospitalization report. As of today, there are 159 patients currently hospitalized with the virus here in Amarillo. 62 patients are in the ICU and 44 on ventilators. 95% of those on ventilators are also not vaccinated. Our hospitals have seen 362 deaths since August 1st. After running out of monoclonal antibody infusions earlier this week, the Amarillo Public Health Department says it received a new shipment of that medication today. The department is already scheduling patients for treatment. The first ones in line will be those who were already on the referral list. Now, this monoclonal treatment is the one that has shown to be effective against the Omicron variant. They will then move to new patients as that monoclonal antibody supply lasts. New tonight, the CDC now encouraging more Americans to wear more protective masks like the ones used by medical professionals. The same ones we were told not to use when the supplies were low back in 2020. Here's what you need to know. The CDC officially changing course on what masks Americans should use in the fight against the coronavirus. The agency now encouraging Americans to wear N95 masks used by healthcare workers. They're certified by the National Institute of Occupational Safety and Health, or NIOSH, and should have a stamp on them. Another recommendation, the KN95 mask. It's more comfortable and still offers good protection. So what's the difference? A KN95 mask is not certified for medical use in the way that the N95 is, but they're, they're 
construct in terms of the mask itself, the filtration properties are quite similar. It does a very good job. Dr. Rodney Young with Texas Tech Physicians Family Medicine says the next step below that is the surgical masks. And those provide a good level of protection. But in their core, surgical masks are designed to protect others around you since at the time of surgery, we're thinking we'll mask to keep from uh, putting our patients at risk. After that, you move into cloth masks with multiple layers and pockets for filters, which Dr. Young says provides a better level of protection than thin cloth masks and bandanas. Oftentimes they are marketed or reviewed online as how wonderfully breathable they are. It's almost like having no mask at all. And in fact, they're telling you the truth. It is almost like having no mask at all. He says when using a mask, you don't just want to check for airflow through the mask material, but also how well it seals. You know, ideally, in order to create the environment that creates maximum filtration, there needs to be a good seal on the perimeter of the mask. That's why the surgical masks and the cloth masks that are just not engineered to be able to provide that seal will never provide the same level of protection as the masks that are designed with the seal in mind. President Joe Biden announcing Thursday that his administration planning to make high quality masks including N95s available for free. He says more details are coming next week. Staffing shortages are leading to school closures across the state as Omicron continues to surge, leading education advocates to reignite calls for more local control. Currently, the TEA allows schools to offer remote learning for students who test positive or have a close contact, but only for up to 20 days. Now, there's not a framework for when staff test positive. The reason for these rules is the effect of the COVID slide when months of virtual learning took a toll on students everywhere. Still, education advocates say it should be a short-term option in emergencies like this. Allowing school districts to, to be able to implement procedures like requiring masks uh, in, in their campuses when they see a rise in cases, um, like having protocols to where we can have virtual learning in, in, in places where it is not safe to be in the school buildings. The TEA also advised school districts ahead of the school year to build extra days into their calendars for scenarios like we're seeing now. The agency says it's closely monitoring the current situation. Here's where you can go to get your coronavirus vaccine. The Amarillo Public Health Department is open Monday through Friday and offers both Moderna and Pfizer vaccines. The next, next vaccine clinic will be Monday at the Dr. Martin Luther King Parade and lunch at 2000 North Hughes. Shedding more light on Amarillo Parks next, how city officials are laying out their vision for various sport complexes and other facilities across town. And we are checking out our Canyon Newway camera. You need the Dramamine. It is still windy. We're talking about wind gusts over 40 to 50 miles per hour. And tomorrow will be a windy day plus cold weather. More coming up in a moment.